everyone. Welcome to the Pace Studio in New York City. Uh, we are here with Mark Bryant, formerly of Hootie and the Blowfish fame, and uh, Scott Tucker. Welcome, y'all. Hi. Thank you for having us. Thanks so much for coming by. Um, you're going to play a few songs from your new solo record Correct. Um, called Songs of the Fortnite. Yes. Uh, what's the first song you're going to play for us? Uh, the first song I want to play is uh, what we're calling a first single. Um, it's a song I co-wrote with my buddy Joe Firstman called uh, Forgetting About Me. Cool. Whenever yeah. you're ready. All right, cool. We'll hop right into it. One, two, three, four. <laughs> It's time for you to leave again, my darling It's raining outside and it's early in the morning Pack a bag and you're everybody's friend Let's call it half past ten Take this picture to remember me by In case you get that wandering eye Who knows when I will see you again We'll keep in touch between now and then and I don't want you forgetting about me I don't want you forgetting about me I close my eyes and you're all I see And I don't want you forgetting about me We made some promises and we had plans All locked up in picture frames Stories of glory, the time would stretch I bet the best hasn't happened yet and I don't want you forgetting about me I don't want you forgetting about me I close my eyes and you're all I see And I don't want you forgetting about me I don't want you forgetting about me I sure as hell made a mess of my dreams Thank you. Nice little clammy ending there, just to keep it live, <laughs> let you know we're live. Yeah. There we let go. it ring out. <laughs> um, so tell us about Songs of the Fortnight. Um, it kind of came from blogging, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I, I uh, uh, After I did my second solo album, uh, like with Hootie and the Bloodfish, we took a, a hiatus and I made a second solo album and that was all fun, fun and everything. But when I started writing new songs after that, I started thinking, well, there's not going to be a Hootie album for a while. And I'm... I don't want to make another another solo album just the way I've made the ones in the past. And every, and people were buying less and less albums and just started to become more of a song world. So I th thought, well, as I write these songs, I'm just going to go ahead and record them and release them because I can now, you know. And so I, I looked up, uh, me and my, my business partner looked up uh, songoftheweek.com and it was taken. And we looked up songofthemonth.com and of course it was taken. And I'm like, try Song of the Fortnite. And it was not taken. So we bought songofthefortnight.com and literally I started dropping songs every two weeks. And um, I was really active producing other artists at the time and co-writing with other people and playing on other people's recordings. So I was dropping my songs plus the stuff that I was active doing every two weeks for about three years. And then um, I took a, after that, I took a job with the College of Charleston teaching. And I also started a, a producing a TV show. So I, there wasn't as much studio time at that point. But I had enough songs to release a third solo album at that point. So the, it was recorded different than any of my other solo albums. But, um, you know, it's released as a package now. It's exciting. Long answer to a short How many songs did you question. have that you had to, like, whittle it down to album length? God. I mean, anytime I've done a record, whether it's with Hootie or solo, there's always more than enough, which is a good problem to have. We're, yes. we're, everyone in the band's 
we're all prolific songwriters, so it's nice because you can go, you can edit and filter and try to pick the best stuff, and that's what you have on Songs of the Fortnite. So I probably had twenty some to choose from and wow. narrowed it down to these. Yeah, that's solid. That's yeah. solid. Did you find that there was uh, kind of like a continuous theme? Uh, that you could pick out kind of retroactively between all of the songs that made this record. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't know it or think about it until uh, somebody asked me that in an interview before this today, and I and got me thinking about it. And I thought, well, even though the songs were written separately, they were written uh, over a three to five year period of of my life, which might make some sort of statement as to where I was at that point in my life. So I looked back at at the songs and thought about the subject matter, and it, there's definitely. Um, uh, you know, I, I wrote the, a lot of these songs after divorce, and and I think there's like definitely a uh, you can hear me searching for unconditional love. I've, I was kind of starting to learn what that really meant uh, at that point in my life, and I think there's some, that that seems to be a thread that runs through the album, not intentionally, but looking back on it, I see that now, and um, it's interesting. You know, totally. I don't know if it's the whole album, but throughout the songs, you hear lines a lot of times that are questioning and try to be a little more idealistic about things and you know i don't know yeah yeah totally yeah. well tell us about the next song you're going to play today um okay uh there's this really cool spot in charleston where you walk out to the morris island lighthouse and um <clears throat> uh and there and so there's a line in the song that references that and basically it was written about uh when i, I met somebody and uh and my friends were asking me if I was seeing anybody after I'd gotten divorced and everything. And they were like, uh, yeah, so, who, you know, you seen anybody? I was like, yes. And I said the line, if you saw her, you'd understand. And I thought, oh, that sounds like a really good song title. <laughs> so um, I sat down with my buddy Mac Leapart and told him about my title. I think I had the chorus, and he helped me put some verses to it, and, uh, and we came up with this. And while I'm switching guitars here, um, I'm going to reintroduce my boy Scott Tucker over here. Scott Tucker over here. <laughs> um, oh, I guess I need that guitar. And uh, Scott is from Maryland, as I'm, I'm, I'm I originally, and um, I've started a band with a bunch of my Maryland buddies from growing up called Mark Bryan and the Screaming Trojans. Yes. And so Scott is uh, one of my favorite people to sing with, and he was nice enough to come up early today and do this with me. So thank you, Scotty T. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. All right. First one there, last one gone Always tied a big one on Good enough was good enough for me Lately I haven't been around My friends think that I skipped town But I just stumbled on a better place to be Tonight I am letting go I'm changing my plan If you saw her, you understand there's a breeze out on the island where the moon lights up the sand if you saw her you'd understand you'd understand I've been making out with magazines but she's the real thing Jumped right off the page into my heart I wanna take her everywhere She's never been before Kiss her underneath a million stars Tonight I am letting go I'm changing my plan If you saw her you'd understand there's a breeze out on the island where the moon lights up the sand If you saw her, you'd understand If you saw her, you'd understand You'd understand Don't wake me if I'm dreaming Keep that engine full I got my foot on the gas and I wanna go fast, way past the past 
It doesn't matter if we crash They say beauty's from within And I guess it must have been Before it busted out of her and became free I want to give her everything her heart desires Cause she just gives it all right back to me So tonight I am letting go I'm changing my plan If you saw her you'd understand There's a breeze out on the island Where the moon lights up the sand If you saw her you'd understand Oh, like art were crafted by God's hand Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Scotty T. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Um, so you kind of mentioned uh, in between the last uh, couple songs um, that you have your hands in like a lot of different projects going on in Charleston right now. Um, I was wondering if you could just elaborate on a bunch of them. Um, I mean, for example, um, you're working with Stoplight Observations, who we were lucky enough to have here in the studio a few months ago. Uh, you mentioned a TV show. Tell us about your class that you're mm -hmm. teaching. Like, can I audit yeah, that? Yeah, these, like, these are... What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what was the last thing you said? Oh, can I audit your class? <laughs> yes, you can, actually. Yeah, these were um, opportunities that came along uh, once we took a break with Hootie. And I, it's the kind of thing where if we were still active and this, these came along, I would have had to say no. But we were on this hiatus, and I, I just thought, well, this is a chance for me to uh, stretch out a little bit. You know, I'm very passionate about music. Uh, I know, I've known since I was a teenager that I was gonna have a career in music one way or the other. And so this was a chance for me to, to produce other artists more, um, take the job with the college and share some of my experience with kids who are coming up through. I know I would have loved to have had a class like that when I was coming through. Well, what, what exactly is the class? Um, it's Intro to Music Industry. Yeah. Yeah, and um, and then I'm also the artist in residence for the music industry program. So I help design the other courses and hire instructors and uh, help kids find internships and jobs all over the country in the music industry stuff like that. So it's a very rewarding job. I think it, it feels like the right thing for me to be doing at this point in my life, you know. Um, and then this other opportunity came along to uh, to produce a live music television show out of Charleston at the at the Charleston Music Hall, which is a really great venue. And we were fortunate that the PBS station in Charleston, um, ETV, or the, in South Carolina, ETV, uh, picked it up. And so that sort of gave us the incentive to raise funds and make season one. And it's great. We have, like, Toad the Wet Sprocket and Sam Bush and... Uh, we have uh, Sister Hazel and Driving and Crying and um, Edwin McCain. A lot of my 90s buddies came out of the woodwork to do this thing. And it's like, like they, these are all the bands I grew up with. Everybody <laughs> sounds amazing still. And I got to, yeah, and, totally. and it gives the show a cool twist. You know, it's sort of Austin City Limits like, but we have a cool twist because I'm hanging out with my friends, talking music, talking shop. And I think people get to hear conversation that they, you know, wouldn't normally hear. It's not like your normal interview because. I'm talking to them as another musician, so totally. um, it's it's been a nice touch, and and I'm really excited that we, we our first season airs this fall on PBS um, stations, and we're, we're hoping that more markets pick it up than just South Carolina too, so it could have some national coverage. So it's exciting. Cool. Uh, managing Stoplight was another opportunity. Those guys brought me their album Tugadu, and I heard it, and I was like, this is brilliant. Um, and they didn't have management at the time, so I thought maybe I could help give the album a proper release and um so that's what we spent the last year doing and now they just dropped uh their new single yesterday uh and it's called coyote so i'm telling you nice people plug. yeah i'm telling you people to go look it up right now it's the best song of 2017 you can i put a post up the other night this is the best song of 2010 you can argue if you want but i'm telling you it is so i would go find that song right now if i were you uh cool. stoplight observations coyote and then um <laughs> Uh, I've got a nonprofit that I've been working with for years. That was my and it's, last question. It's another thing that I would have loved to have when I was up and coming. Um, it's for kids, and it's an after-school recording studio. 
And so when I was starting to write songs as a teenager, you know, I was dying for something like this. I would borrow my friend's four tracks and stuff and it sounds terrible. But so we're trying to, we have like these things outfitted with logic and everything. So we're trying to teach these kids how to do it right. And um, not only can kids come record and make songs, but it's also sort of a, a technology program where they're learning how, how to use recording software. So it's kind of a, I think it could be really beneficial for, Absolutely. for these kids. And we're trying to expand that around the state. It's only in Charleston now. We're expanding in Charleston, and we ultimately would like to go all over South Carolina with that too. So yeah, and that nonprofit is called Carolina Studios. Correct. Or the, the location is. Yep, Carolina Studios. Studios okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, great. What's the last song you're going to play for us today? Um, I'm going to play a little ballad because uh, we're in an acoustic setting here, and I was thinking this is probably the only chance I'll get to play this song live because I never do it at shows unless I do like an acoustic show somewhere. So. Thought this would be a good fit. Um, this was a uh, uh, so breakup, classic breakup song. Why did I walk away, Wendy? You were everything a woman could be. But I met you when I was a mess I had no business My goodness, you are so pretty Every picture that you took Was like the way it would look If it were a movie You didn't want to be only friends Afraid to give my heart away but I hope you're still in Charleston How could I let you slip away from me? You were everything a man could need And I can't even play this guitar without thinking about you We'd sing a little harmony Lucinda Williams in the key of C You left your mark on my heart You didn't want to be only friends Too afraid to give my heart away again But I hope you're still in Charleston I hope you're still in Charleston Maybe then Thank you. Beautiful. So, I know you're playing our house guitars, Epiphone and uh, D'Angelico today, but we have a question from... Uh, someone tuning into the live stream asking what uh, what your rarest guitar that you own is. Wow, yeah. I think uh, it might be, there, I, I came across a 57 Les Paul. Dude. Yeah, with a Bigsby. And I just don't think there's a whole lot of really good condition of those still around. So I, that, that one, I don't know if it's the rarest, but it's, it's definitely... Um, I think a prize part of my collection, as is I have a 59 Gretsch 6120. Um, yeah, and that one's, again, not, I don't know if I'd call it rare, but it's a prize, you know. Are you a big collector? I am. I have okay. about um, somewhere between 30 and 40 instruments, you know, mostly guitars, but I have mandolins and banjos and ukuleles and basses and, you know, lap steels, anything with strings. I have a bunch of keyboards and, you know, I, in my studio, I just kind of have everything you need to make timeless recordings. It's the dream, dude. It is. And I'm living <laughs> it. <laughs> um, so you've got a show tonight um, at Rockwood. I and, do. I'm so um, excited. For anyone tuning in who's in New York City. Yeah. And um, a few more dates coming up, um, mostly East Coast. Yeah. I mean, I'm just doing a handful of shows to support the release of the record here. And um T uh, tonight is New York Rockwood Stage Two at ten o'clock, and then tomorrow is um, Washington D.C. area. We're playing uh, Jam and Java in Vienna, Virginia, 
And then Saturday we were playing in Hershey, Pennsylvania at um, – it's it's like music on chocolate, <laughs> yeah. music on chocolate in the okay, park. That's my dream. <laughs> exactly. With the Swains. Right? With the Swains, yeah, okay. some friends of ours who kind of booked us for the show. So that so it's a fun three days. Um, I'm really I'm really looking forward to it. And um, while I'm shamelessly plugging people, I'd like to thank my publicist uh, Josh Bloom for putting this together and helping me uh, organize the help me organize the release of my record. Um, it's been very helpful. So thank you, Josh. <laughs> Awesome. Um, I mean, thank you so much for being here with us today for playing some great tunes. Um, congrats on the record and uh, come back anytime. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs>